Coming up, it was a close call, but thanks to you, we dodged the bullet. Uh, jet fuel Skyhawk, we take it for a flight. He didn't win, but he's still on top. And General Aviation saves lives around the world. AOPA Live this week begins in just a moment. Build and fly with the Sonics Aircraft B models. The B models offer more room and comfort, more fuel, more panel space, more engine choices, and the same great Sonics Aircraft flight characteristics. Learn more at sonicsaircraft.com. This is AOPA Live This Week with Tom Haynes and Melissa Rudinger. We beat it back in less than 24 hours. It was a backdoor attempt to sneak privatization light into the House FAA reauthorization bill. Representative Bill Schuster added a manager's amendment that would have transferred air traffic control out of the FAA to the Department of Transportation. And it would have also created a so-called advisory board composed of, you guessed it, mostly the airlines and their allies. The general aviation community rallied immediately on Tuesday. Once again, the, uh, the aviation community came together, us, NBA, and others on the phone, got all their members uh, to focus on the idea. This was urgent, very urgent, because the vote was set within 24 hours uh, on this amendment. And the response was overwhelming and significant. And by late that night, that part of the bill was pulled back again. AOPA, NBA, EAA, Gamma, HAI, and other aviation associations sent urgent messages to their members to call Congress. Pilots did just that by the thousands. But Mark Baker thinks there's something much more productive that pilots and the industry should be doing. We need an aviation summit, pull all the stakeholders together, uh, find a way for the aviation communities to understand how we can work together, because I think we can. In some cases we do very well with the NAC, the Next Gen Advisory Committee, and use that format to work on the objectives that we've always defined, what is Next Gen, prioritize them, make sure they're resourced correctly, but have the community pull that together, working with FAA and the DOT later on, making sure that we are in agreement. I think in most cases we are. The House is expected to vote on the FAA bill as soon as Friday. The FAA says you no, no longer need a complex airplane for your commercial or flight instructor practical test. That's something AOPA recommended two years ago. The FAA says that it will reduce training costs. It also recognizes that it's becoming increasingly difficult to find single engine aircraft with retractable gear and controllable prop at an affordable rental price. Emory-Riddle has grounded its entire fleet of Piper Arrows after a fatal accident involving a pilot taking a commercial pilot flight test. The wings separated in flight. Loss of control accidents are a focal point for the National Transportation Safety Board. The agency held a day-long conference this week to look for solutions. AOPA and the Air Safety Institute were there. AOPA said that recent regulatory changes to permit installation of angle of attack indicators and low-cost autopilots from the experimental market would make a difference. Um, we hear it from our members all the time. EAA does as well. You know, owners and operators want to update their fleet. The average age of a GA aircraft in this country is about 30, uh, 37 years old. Single-engine piston airplanes average age is about 45 years old. These planes are aging and people want to upgrade it, so there's a lot of demand out there. The second thing is um, there's been a lot of really great products developed in the experimental community. I've obviously seen a bit of a digital wave here in the past decade or two, and a lot of these new products are coming out um, are very software driven, they're very dynamic. Um, so there's a lot of great products in the experimental world, and it's a question of how do we bring those into the certified world where there's a lot more demand for them. The increased use of simulators with realistic training scenarios will also help. An airplane that is synonymous with flight training is the Cessna 172, of course. It's the most produced airplane ever. Over 44,000 have rolled out of the Cessna factory since the 1950s. And not much has changed since then until Cessna announced the new diesel Skyhawk. AOPA technical editor Jill Tallman has the story about how the new Turbo Skyhawk JTA compares to an Avgas powered 172. It's a classic trainer with a big dose of modern technology. The Cessna Turbo Skyhawk JTA looks pretty much like any other 172 from a distance. But under the cowling, there is something completely different. The airplane is powered by a 155 horsepower Continental diesel engine. 
To see how the JTA compares to a normal Piston 172, AOPA Online Editor David Tulis and I parked the JTA next to one of AOPA's Avgas 172's, November 163 Mike Echo, to look at the differences. Most noticeable is the three-blade Constant Speed MT prop. On top, the big fuel caps stand out. But other than that, it looks pretty much like our trusty Avgas trainer. To see the difference in the performance between the two airplanes, David and I plan a flight to Lancaster, Pennsylvania from our headquarters in Frederick, Maryland. David flies 163 Mike Echo, while I fly the JTA with Cessna demo pilot Randy DeLong. On startup, the differences between the airplanes really stand out. It takes several steps to start a traditional piston engine. Throttle full forward, mixture full forward. But the JTA starts with a simple push of a button. Power management is also much different in the JTA. When you are ready for takeoff, just push the throttle forward. The FADEC does all the work of managing the engine for you. The avionics have also come a long way. The G1000 NXI in the JTA is a far cry from the steam gauges in 163 Mike Echo. Climbing out to Lancaster, the performance advantage of the turbo diesel starts to stand out. Once we get to cruising altitude, the JTA started to leave 163 Mike Echo behind. Fuel burn is also less in the JTA. At 70% power, the diesel burns just 5.7 gallons per hour. Other than that, the JTA handles pretty much like any other Skyhawk. No different skills are needed to fly this modern take on a classic trainer. Jill Tallman, AOPA Live. The base price for the JTA is $450,000. So it looks like it has some advantages, but that's a pretty steep price. It is. It's been, you know, at least 20, maybe 30,000 more than what you'd pay for an Avgas airplane. Of course, particularly in Europe, uh, where, where Avgas is either really hard to come by or if you can get it, it's really expensive. And, you know, jet fuel is a lot less expensive. So in that market, it makes a lot of sense because you can quickly uh, make up the difference in fuel saving, the you know, price of fuel. Um, but uh, we'll see how it does in the United States. It'll be interesting to watch. It will be. Coming up after the break, the race for the championship. And GA in the jungle. You're watching AOPA Live this week. Hi, I'm Sully Sullenberger here tonight to support Angel Flight West. Pilot volunteers making sure that people, children and adults who need life-saving treatment can get to the treatment they need. As pilots, we're always looking for an excuse to go fly. So the next time you want to get a $100 hamburger, perhaps you should fly a volunteer flight or Angel Flight West. You'll be deriving satisfaction, purpose, and meaning from serving a cause greater than yourselves and flying. Welcome back. The Red Bull Air Race kicked off again this weekend in Cannes, France. Australian pilot Matt Hall took first in the race. American and AOPA Ambassador Michael Goulian came in third. But after his win in Abu Dhabi, Goulian is first in the series overall. AOPA's Air Safety Institute recently interviewed Goulian for the There I Was podcast. In the podcast, pilots share stories about lessons they learned during an unpredictable situation in the air. Whatever happened, I completely ruptured the center fuel tank. So there was a couple of inches of 100 low lead in the belly of my airplane, and my feet were soaked in 100 low lead. The, the tank had split pretty well. Yikes. And so I'm sitting here, okay, there I was, you know, in the middle of the aerobatic box, eight miles from the airport. You can find the podcast on the Air Safety Institute website. It's your last chance. The deadline for AOPA's flight training scholarships is May 2nd. There are a variety of scholarships for high school students, for anyone who wants to complete a primary certificate, and for current pilots who want to add an advanced rating. The scholarships are part of AOPA's You Can Fly program and are funded by generous donations to the AOPA Foundation. AOPA's You Can Fly Academy hosted the annual convention for the Air Care Alliance last week. The organization helps volunteer pilot groups that use general aviation to serve the community. These groups have a variety of missions from rescuing animals to disaster relief. The Air Care Alliance helps these organizations by providing training and advocacy. I think that the thing that people really need to understand is that general aviation is sort of a sleeping giant because 
a lot of people do not understand all the many roles that general aviation plays in serving the nation and serving our, uh, our communities. And so I, I, I think that through this conference and through the work with AOPA and the other major organizations, we hope to get that word out. The theme for this year's conference was emergency and disaster preparedness. And general aviation doesn't just serve the U.S., it's a powerful tool for helping people around the world. AOPA senior features editor Julie Walker has the story about a group of pilots using their airplanes to save lives in Colombia. Colombia, South America, a beautiful, wild, diverse country. From the bustling capital of Bogota to small, remote villages with a simpler way of life, Colombia hosts a socioeconomic profile as diverse as its landscape. Outside Bogota, there is a group of general aviation pilots who support an active airfield and form a solid pilot community. The group is called the Civil Air Patrol. The organization was formed in the 1980s by pilots who wanted to do more than just fly the average $100 hamburger run. The Civil Air Patrol is an organization dedicated to transform lives in Colombia. To transform lives, the group organizes and provides staff from medical missions into areas where care is limited. Volunteer doctors, nurses, and aid workers are transported into these remote areas by volunteer pilots in a variety of aircraft. Flight planning is crucial for these challenging missions to account for terrain, weather, and to work around government bureaucracy. For this flight, the mission is to fly to El Charco, which involves crossing the 17,000-foot Andes Mountains. The Quest Kodiak is full of medical gear and supplies, descending through the jungle into a short, narrow strip. El Charco gives a glimpse of what life is like in poor, rural Colombia. The river is the center of life in the village, providing transportation and food. El Charco struggles with lack of clean running water and medical care. The clinic, which opens here once a year, provides much needed operations, including dental procedures, eye care, and surgical operations. On this day at the clinic, the routine procedures are interrupted by an emergency. A young girl is brought in, near death from respiratory complications. She must be transported as soon as possible to the closest modern hospital. She's taken through El Charco, put on a boat, and then carried back to the landing strip for loading into a Piper Seneca II. Veteran pilot Hans Timke makes the life-saving two-hour flight to the hospital. If I would not have landed exactly just by heaven's <laughs> decree, by I think so, that time, it would have taken about five hours by boat uh, through the rivers, the ocean, to tobacco, and uh, from what I heard, something like 12 or 13 hours to the next best hospital from there. It would have taken at least yeah, close to 20 hours. General aviation truly made the difference between life and death here, and that is why these pilots and doctors use their weekends to make a difference. I do it because I, I love it. It has helped me to become maybe Maybe a, a better person, <laughs> maybe. You, you can change a life and, and that's very, very good for you, for your soul. <laughs> Julie Walker, AOPA Live. You can read more about General Aviation serving Columbia in the May issue of AOPA Pilot Magazine. Can you believe that? Wow. The, the, I'm, I'm really looking forward to the article coming out. I talked to Julie about the trip, but it was a really, really transforming uh, trip for her. It, uh, it really was, and you can tell from the pilots, it's, you know, sort of the experiences they have in helping people in, in that part of the world. It's really transformational for them, too. It is amazing what our little airplanes can do in the right place. Well, that will do it for us this week. Thanks so much for watching. We hope to see you here next Thursday for another edition of AOPA Live This Week.
Purchasing your own aircraft is an exciting experience. AOPA Finance simplifies the process, saving you money with lower interest rates and hassle-free loans, so you get into your new aircraft sooner. AOPA Finance, the right approach to buying an aircraft.